Hi, I'm Mike Charbonneau with the NC State College of Veterinary Medicine. Well, the 4th of July is a fun time to celebrate maybe near the water or with some fireworks displays, but it can also be a time of increased risks for your pet. Dr. Steve Marks is Associate Dean and Director of Veterinary Medicine with the NC State Veterinary Hospital, and he's here with some important safety tips. So Dr. Marks, first, fireworks, fun for people, but maybe not so much for pets. Yeah, I think it's a, if you have a young animal, you may not know yet how they'll react to loud noises. If you have had a pet in your household for a long time, you'd probably have an idea if they're frightened of loud noises like thunder or fireworks. So I would be very cautious. Um, fireworks, they're, they're dangerous for people. There's lots of people that don't enjoy loud noises. Um, so I would use caution. Um, I try and keep them in a secure part of the house. There's no reason for them to attend fireworks um, unless you absolutely know they would be calm in that situation and you've, you've rehearsed that. Um, I would make sure that you have identification on your pet, um, microchipping, just in case they hear a loud noise and they scurry away. Um, it's going to be very important that somebody can identify them readily and contact you to return them to their household. So uh, fireworks for me are one of the largest uh, causes of stress in animals during the summer. What should you think about if you're celebrating at home, you're just doing some backyard grilling, maybe no fireworks, but sparklers for the kids? Yeah, so I think anything that can cause thermal injury, so matches, fire, sparklers, fireworks, they should be kept far away from pets. Um, you just don't know how they react. I mean, some may actually migrate towards the flame and towards the heat. Um, you, need to, you, like, you need to be the guardian in that situation. So lots of people head out to the water, the lake or the beach this time of year. Um, we know some dogs like to swim. What's the safety advice when it comes to that, though? Again, I think you should know your pet. I mean, I think it's assumed that all dogs can swim, swim well. I can assure you that's not the case. I have absolutely had my own dogs that I put in water, and they think they like to swim, but they, they sink like a rock. Um, water hazards are, are huge. I mean, it's not just the water itself, but it can be some of the water sports um, we see dogs that have been hit by boats. Uh, we see dogs that will go underwater and they have what's called a near drowning effect. So they don't actually drown, but they have a near drowning episode. And that can be, that can be uh, very difficult to recover. So I would be very, very cautious. Um, in, in North Carolina, we have uh, lots of bodies of water that are stagnant, whether they be marshes, um, they be ponds, or even, in, even some rivers and streams, you need to be very cautious about what's in that water. Um, bacteria, there can be fungus. Um, you just, again, you need to be cautious, you need to be safe. And then finally, if you have any general health concerns at all, if your pet's not acting like themselves, what should you do? You should always contact your veterinarian if there's any concerns. And again, most pet owners are very good about knowing their pets. One of the things to consider is if they have a known pre-existing disease, if you have older dogs, you have younger dogs, you have dogs with pre-existing disease, be very cautious and watch them carefully. You can find more on these and other important safety tips on the NC State Veterinary Hospital website. Visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash pet safety.